Taryn and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the costume design of Lovecraft Country's fifth episode, which is titled Strange Case. This is Ruby's episode and she wakes up as a white woman. To me, she's not as like stunned as I would, I would probably be or I would expect someone to be if they woke up. Completely different. Um, so this is interesting her reaction isn't as severe to me as it should be or that it could be ruby has morphed into dell we met dell in the second episode but she got knocked out by letty with a shovel dell is like wandering through the streets in this black robe that has fringe and it has some hints of blue in it william comes to get her and she's wearing the gray suit with suspenders he's always dressed pretty formal and then we see Montrose he Montrose is wearing a white tank brown slats and he has bloody fingertips Letty appears and she's wearing the same color scheme as she was wearing in the Boston Museum visit she's wearing a coral ruched top and she's wearing a white skirt that has some embroidery against the bottom of it and it's the same white belt I believe it's kind of showing the same color scheme and she's also wearing coral which is kind of similar to the orange red orange that Tick was wearing in the last episode. So again, some hints of foreshadowing here. I believe at this point, like red is associated with magic. Tick is in a chambray top and burgundy pants. Red, and he beats up his neck. And Letty, like we see when she goes down to the basement and brings a bat in case Tick wants to act up with her, she's wearing espadrilles. And then we go back to William slash Christina's house. William is getting dressed in a red suit. He's saying a spell, Del, Ruby as Del or Ruby as she decides her name is gonna be Hillary when she's white. Um, she's wearing a black and white formal outfit. Um, it's like this nice top with like this A-line skirt and she's wearing red gloves that just cover like the hands. It doesn't even go to the wrist. And again, I feel like that red is associated with magic. Um, Ruby as Dell goes to get a job at Marshall Field and Company. She decides that her name is going to be Hillary Davenport. She's wearing a red two-piece suit. Again, red is being associated with what? Magic. And I feel like prior to getting more engulfed with magic, I don't think red was necessarily associated with magic. I feel like it was different in Letty's case. Following a successful interview as Hillary, Ruby morphs back into herself. Later on in the episode, we see Christina trying to relate and try to console Ruby in a way, and it's just, it's not working out. Christina is wearing a black top, a white skirt, and a black belt. Montrose heads to Caprini Green after his beat down by his son Tick. He goes to see his lover. Montrose is wearing a light blue shirt. He's beaten up, battered, and abused with, and the shirt has white accents, and he's wearing gray slacks. Sammy is wearing this red and white striped shirt and khaki pants. And next we see Hillary is wearing black and white, pearls, a white hat. I feel like the black and white in this outfit kind of represents that Ruby is black and she is in Dale's body, white, in white and black. It depicts the fact to me that Ruby is a black woman that morphs into the body of a white woman. Tamara is the name of the girl that works, the black girl that works in the company that Ruby, as Ruby, wanted to work for, and she realized, like, someone else already works there. She's wearing navy with red and white stripes, so definitely very American. And then William shows up after work to deliver Ruby as Ruby's outfit that he wants her to wear in this The Help. The outfit is The Help. It's like this burgundy, again, associated with magic with a white Peter Pan collar. Um, yeah, yeah. Talk about being knocked down. At this um, police party or whatever, Christina is wearing a white pinstripe belted A-line dress. Again, we see both masculine and feminine elements in her clothing. So we see like Christina when she's gonna be around like men, she dresses a little bit more feminine. Tick is asleep, they're trying to figure out Titus's pages that Letty took pictures of, I believe. He's wearing a red tank top, he has a dream about his ancestor, Hannah, um, and he's engulfed in flames. Letty is wearing a white top with a blue skirt and the skirt of this dress is I feel like it definitely has some kind of like boyish like childish print I feel like it had like tugboats or airplanes on it again I think this is some 
foreshadowing at to the store um ruby as hillary is wearing blue and tamara is wearing brown i feel like she's kind of going back to brown as i mentioned in other costume design breakdowns brown i feel like she's trying to blend in and not cause too much attention to herself but we learned in this episode that she's not being treated fairly and um they're basically making tamara do everything that they don't want to do in the store so i feel like that's her just trying to like salt back and blend in Next we see Montrose is getting ready to go to the ball. This is like his first time embracing the other culture that he's a part of, which is the LGBTQ community. You know, like he's black and he's queer. It's nice to see him find a community that combines both and is accepting of both. I think in the scene of red and with Montrose wearing red, it represents that he's allowing himself to be loved. We also see Sammy wearing yellow and red. I think that Sammy having a red foundation cloaked with yellow shows that Montrose is being more accepting of him and is willing to allow himself to be loved by Sammy. Playing off of the fact that I think that yellow represents the Freeman family. At the ball, Montrose is in red. He's dancing. He's opening up more. He's letting go. Um, he's, he can be himself around people that aren't going to be judging him. He's wearing yellow pants and he kisses Sammy for the first time and they lift him up and he just seems so free and happy in this moment. Like he like let go of like, all the stigmas associated and all the thoughts that like his son, even like his parents would think of him. Ruby as Hillary Davenport are at the bar and they're all wearing the same outfits that they wore the work. And then I thought it was interesting that like we haven't seen Ruby dress in animal prints, but as when she comes to kind of avenge the manager of the store against his assault against Tamara, she wears like an animal print. To me, it's kind of showing that it's not black people that are the wild ones. They're, it's not black people that are the animalistic savages. Um, it's the racist white people in the world. And it, to me, it just kind of shows like, it's not me, it's you. The manager is in a brown pants and a blue shirt, very basic. William is dressed in a black top and gray pants. We know that Christina was just wearing a black top and white skirt and William melts, breaks down into Christina. Ooh, same person, what we've all been thinking. Next we see Tick wearing a white tank top and gray sweatpants. Super, super casual. I don't think I've seen sweatpants at all in this show until now. He's the final scene of the episode. He's able to decipher the book and he's unhappy with what he read. And so he calls Gian, which is the phone call that he keeps making to Korea. That's which we learned in the next episode. Her name is Gian. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you.